You see, when you're in love, just to be holding your beloved's hand, you're in paradise. The fullness of life and goodness fills your whole being. You glow with the sheer joy that comes of the thought of her. The whole of nature is transformed. It becomes wonderful. You look upon everything as, as it should be in its fullness. It's as if you suddenly see it dare I say, as God sees it. I'm sure he's way ahead of that, but in as far as your being can grasp such, that's how you see it. When you come to love God, it's that, and need I say, more so, because in a sense like God's intention for chapter 11 of the Gita, he's looking forward to you experiencing more. And he jumps the gun, gives you the sight, the sensitivity, the awareness of him, just that little bit too much to tell you that there's actually infinitely more in the fullness of time, the fullness of the unfolding of eternity for us all together. The sheer loveliness and beauty of the love of God in the host of heaven, the family life of God and us into eternity. Love you, Dad. Thank you for your love. I'm reminded that that chapter 11 of the Gita is the equivalent of the um, transfiguration, you know, where the disciples select three, see three transfigured before them. Jesus, is it Moses and Elijah? The key sort of elders of the Hebrew story. If you include Jesus as Hebrew, transfigured before them in glory, shining. You know, as the Gita would say, sunbeams of a thousand suns undeemed of. Then might that holiness and majesty be dreamed of. And, I mean, it's too much, I think it's Peter who says, Lord, <laughs> The tabernacles here, you know, um, I think he means shrines to commemorate this fantastic experience.
not just that. <laughs> Look how God is an awesome God. But his loving kindness is that he is our dad. His loving kindness to us. And it's that which is everything to us. Not the sheer brilliance of his glory, which would be beyond our comprehension at present, and possibly only at present. But what matters to us is the way, which is to come to realize, to recognize, to see in all that's beautiful around us, his love to us, present. The more you look, the more you find, seek and you shall find, and then knock and it will be opened unto you. He that seeketh find it, and so on. That is what's to hand. The eternal, fantastic, wonderful, loving home for you of the kingdom of heaven. And it's now within you. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is within you. It doesn't come with observation. There's no point in these faithful people looking to the end of times. The end times are a long, infinite way off. But Jesus has come already to you now. kingdom of heaven is established in you. I am not waiting for Jesus. I've got him in me. He lives in me. Our God reigns and I mean the heavenly father. I don't mean Jesus except Jesus glorified, except Jesus sanctified. As he says in John 17, except as we all are to be in God's family, because he loves us. Thank you, Dad. Now look, the world doesn't have ears to hear. Not until something wonderful happens. It could be something wonderful like Marshall experienced, where he was in sheer joy and love, that he wanted God to exist. But it's more often in this junior state that one's hit by a tragedy, a loss, uh, a disaster and you realize if only the love of God existed and it will be love as you understand it at that point in time it will be your God one who could conceivably rescue you uh, if you're of a legalistic fundamentalist type view of life, one who even would forgive you for some good rational reason like he sacrificed his son as the Christians read the story. God forbid, but God doesn't. 
he lets them read it that way. Because that's what they need in their present dilemma. Because he loves them. We may not know love yet. It makes no difference to the love he loves as he knows love. Not as you and I know love, but as he knows love. And as he is able. Where was I? Yes. Is they may not have ears to hear. And the great tragedy that they're in tears about, the great loss. The heartbreak the need that they're experiencing. Causes them to have ears to hear. If only your make-believe of God were real. And that's done it. They are wanting God to exist. On this I will build my church, says Jesus. On this confession, on this realization, on this verbalization, upon this witness that you want to believe. I, God of heaven and all, will respond because I am your dad and love you. Thank you, dad.